Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the last class, hope you have completed uh, constructing the uh, what is that? The NFA from the given regular expression, right? So in the last class, we have discussed how to construct the NFA from the regular expression using McNaughton and Bar function. Okay. So all the, uh, we discussed regarding the basis rule and the induction rules to be followed. The basis rule in the sense. So here. Uh, uh, from the base level of the regular expression to the higher level we'll be dealing with. So base in the sense, uh, base is nothing but if the regular expression is having only, uh, uh, only the input symbol, right? So no operators are involved, right? So in that case, we'll be dealing with the, uh, if there's no operators involved, then it is going to be, we'll be following the basis rule and then we have uh, seen rules uh, with uh, for the operators, which is the induction rule, right? So if I, uh, if uh, we want to perform, if, uh, for example, if I want to construct an MFA, which is constructed, already constructed based upon two different regular expressions, right? So already I'm having two NFAs, which is constructed from two regular expressions. If I want to take union of those two regular expressions, and if I want to construct the NFA for it, right? So that is, I want to take union of this NFA and this NFA, union operation of these two. So what I have to do, so uh, this is going to be the rule to be followed for the union operation or or operation. Next comes, this is the rule for the concatenation and this is for the clean closure. All right. So in the case of Petrachin and the Thompson algorithm, we'll be dealing only with these three operators uh, and brackets will be there. So that we will not discuss with regard to the positive closure. Okay. So positive closure is the higher level operator, so which we which will not be discussed here. Okay. So uh, uh, we have seen one example for uh, uh, constructing the NFA from the given regular expression. So what is the first step? So first I have to proceed with constructing the bar sweep for the regular expression. So here if while constructing the bar sweep, you have to follow the precedence of operators. Precedence of operators is nothing but the first brackets is going to be evaluated. Next comes uh, clean closure, then concatenation and the V union operation. Okay, so here uh, what we are talking of this is nothing but so for example yes if I want to proceed with the A B All right. So here, what is the meaning is, is so first this will be evaluated, right? So here this is A. Okay. So this will generate A. So here it will generate A B. So here we should not um we should not proceed with the pros, uh, performing A or so for example. Okay, I think this will be a bit confusing. Okay, so we cannot first evaluate this one and the resultant cannot be concatenated with the A. Okay, so this should be evaluated, this should be evaluated, and then the resultant needs to be, we have to proceed with the operation. Okay, so here brackets uh, has the highest priority. Next comes the clean closure, for next to concatenation, and finally the union operation. Okay, so by based on that, we have constructed the parse tree and using each and every rule uh, discussed earlier that we have constructed the uh, NFA, right? So here we have, uh, uh, I hope you would have completed, right? So here we have discussed till this point, I think. Mm. Yes, we have discussed till this. So here for B, I am going to construct an NFA for R8, which is nothing but, so yes, again, same thing. You can go for any of numbering convention, okay? Any of the numbering convention you can follow. So here in this case, Uh, 
Okay, so here you can see this is the NFA for R8 and this is the NFA for R9, right? So next what I have to do, I have to, sorry, uh, this is the NFA for R8 and this is the NFA for R7. So now I have to proceed with the constructing the NFA for R9. So here R9 is nothing but R. R7, that is, this is R7, this is R7 and this is R8. So what I have to do, I have to proceed with concatenating these two. So how I am going to concatenate the final state of R7 and star state of R8 is going to be merged. Right. Okay, so here uh, this is going to be the um, NFA for R9. Okay, so the next is going to be uh, similarly again. I have to proceed with the constructing the NFA for R10, and then I have I'll be getting this final NFA. Okay, so the, this is going to be the final NFA. NFA. So here the, it is a very simple thing. It is a very straightforward mechanism. The only thing is that you have to use the sequence of rules involved to proceed with the construction of NFA. So none of the logical thinking is required. So earlier we discussed regarding constructing the NFA and the TFA based upon the language, right? So in this case, we have we should be uh, thinking of a logic behind to construct the TFA or NFA. Whereas what we have seen uh, the with the McNaughton and Emeta algorithm is nothing but just based upon the rule we are going to construct. Okay, so it is a very straightforward mechanism. Uh, I'll be giving you one more question to work on with. Later, you can proceed with that. Now, what we are going to do now is we have seen NFA. So, we have seen NFA. So, this is a NFA, right? And we have seen, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is the DFA and this is the NFA, right? So, we have uh, uh, already we have discussed what is the difference between the DFA and NFA. So, please make a note of it. So, uh, NFA and DFA are of equal in strength, okay? So, the thing is that they, for uh, exploring all the possibilities, we'll be using the NFA. If we want to design a machine, if I want to construct a machine, then in that case, I have to go with the DFA, okay? So, here, um, um, uh, 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 with respect to the uh, triples, all the triples are of uh, 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 how many triples are there for uh, finite automata? What are the triples we have discussed? What are the triples we have discussed, Mark? NFA, fi sorry, finite automata, what about the triples we have discussed? You remember it. So earlier we discussed, right? Yes. So this is for the non. Uh, so the main difference between the deterministic and non-deterministic is nothing but. So here, uh, in the case of deterministic finite automata, the transition function is going to be varied with respect to the non-deterministic one. So whatever may be, whether it is deterministic or non-deterministic, here it will be represented by five tuples. That is Q. It is nothing but the set of states of the finite automata. Sigma is going to be the input to this. So here, if we talk of this example, Q is Q, Q not Q1, Q2. Okay, so Q is the Q is equal to Q naught, Q1, and Q2, right? And sigma is equal to input symbol. So A comma B, right? And next comes the transition function. So here the case of transition function is going to be uh, uh, the definition of transition function is varied with respect to the TFA and the NFA. So if we talk of the deterministic finite automata, this is going to be the transition function. That is, from each state for each and every input symbol, there will be a transition to a single state. Okay. So here you can see from Q0 to for input symbol A, I'm having a transition to Q1. Whereas in the case of non-determinist state, so I hope we have seen an example. Yes. Yes, you can see here, right? So in this case, you can see so from Q0 for input symbol A, I'm having transition to Q0 as well as Q1. 
okay so this is called as the non determinism okay whereas in the case of deterministic it will be a definite one determined one okay so either it will have so it will have a, there won't be any confusion at all so whereas in this case if you are designing a machine with this so the machine cannot make a decision whether it has it should have a transition to q not or q1 so whereas in the case of determinism there will be a clear uh, uh, idea where the transition should be okay so here from q naught there is a transition for inputs maria and we having a transition to q1 okay and similarly that transition will be for only one state and another case is that i can have multiple transition for same input symbol i can have transition to multiple states and i can have uh, my uh, uh, from a particular state for an input symbol, I I can I need not have a transition at all in the case of NFA. So here in this case, you can see for input symbol A, I'm having a transition. Whereas from Q1 for input symbol B, I'm not having a transition. So epsilon is also possible. Okay, so that is also possible. So whereas in the case of NF uh, DFA, I should have the transition for E and every input symbol and for and that transition to be for a specific state not for a multiple state okay so here what we are going to discuss now is till this point we were saying uh, dfa and nfa are equal in strength so equal in strength in the sense by we have to prove it right we have to prove it how we can prove so if, if it is equivalent okay if it is equivalent i should be able to start from one thing and i have to be able to reach the next and vice versa okay so now what we are going to do is i i should be in a position to start from an nfa and then i should be able to construct a dfa from that nfa okay nfa to dfa should be possible okay so by that way we can proceed with the uh, uh, proving that NFA and DFA are of equal in strength. So, okay, so here in this example, uh, here we have seen some set of uh, NFAs, right? So, this is uh, this is NFA and this is DFA, right? This is NFA and this is uh, DFA. So, here in this case, in this case of NFA, we are not having epsilon transition okay there's no empty transitions at all with the epsilon we are not having any transitions whereas if we constructed the nfa with by means of mcnaught and number of thompson algorithm we were having epsilon transitions okay so we will be having separate methodology of converting the nfa so if we talk of the uh, uh, nfa with the epsilon transition then it is called as the epsilon nfa Okay, so NFA, which is having epsilon transitions, is going to be called as the epsilon NFA. Okay, so here this is NFA without epsilon transition. Okay, so here what we are going to do now is to proceed with converting the NFA. Here first we are going to deal with the non epsilon NFA to DFA conversion. Okay. Right, so now uh, uh, we can convert the epsilon NFA to DFA. Uh, and we can convert non epsilon NFA to DFA, right? So first, what we are going to proceed with is converting the uh, non epsilon NFA to its equivalent DFA. So how to deal with that's what we are going to see. Are you clear with McNaught and Emeta Thompson algorithm? Yes, sir, no ma. Yes, sir. Yes, good. Yes, it is a straightforward mechanism, so it will be clear for you. Okay. So here. Okay, I think uh, one of one of your friends have asked to discuss regarding the assignment answers. I'll be discussing later, right? So because I have started with this one, so after this, uh, later in the next class, uh, uh, I will uh, proceed with the discussing the answers for the assignment questions. Okay. Uh, now we can proceed with converting. So here we are not talking of the epsilon NFA. Uh, uh, what we are going to deal now is. Um, uh, without epsilon transitions, NFA without epsilon transitions, right? 
Okay, what can you infer from this particular uh, NFA? What type of or what type of uh, language this NFA is constructed? Ending with BB. In the French, I can have any sequence of A's and B's. Uh, the end it should uh, it should the language the string should end with BB. Good. Okay, so now uh, I am going to this is a NFA. Uh, uh, is it a DFA or NFA? NFA. Why? NFA. Why? Why? Why you are saying it does? Uh, it uh, doesn't uh, exactly where to which stage. Yes, yes. For input symbol B, I am having a transition to Q1 and Q2. And here you can see for input symbol A, I am not having a transition. And from Q3 for A and B, I am not having any transition. Right? So this is going to be an NFA. Right. So first, what I am going to do is construct the NFA table. So first step is construct you know, the NFA table. So this is a transition diagram. So for now, I am going to construct the uh, transition table. That's it. What are the input symbol? A and B. So here, this is going to be the set of states. I'm going to represent the transitions, right? So first state is Q1. So from Q1, where for input symbol A, where I'm having the transition. For input symbol A, I'm having a transition to Q1. For input symbol B, where I'm having transition. For input symbol B, I'm having a transition to Q1 and Q2. Right? So, from, you know, so next we can move on to another state that is Q2. So here in this case, for input symbol A, is that there is no transition at all. Okay, it is going to be empty. So either you can represent like this or like this, right? Okay, so it is going to be, uh, there is no transition at all now. Okay, so the next is going to be for input symbol B, I am having a transition to Q3. Right? And then next is Q3. For input symbol A, I am not having any transition. For input symbol B, I am not having any transition. So from this, I am going to construct that DFA transition table. Okay. So from this, we are going to start with the DFA transition table. So please make a note over here. This is going to be the start state and this is the final state. Okay. Final state is represented by these of aspects of the transition table. So in transition table, uh, the uh, asterisk is used to represent the. Uh, you can go for any of the conventions. So here, asterisk is used to represent the final state, right? Okay, as uh, here now I'm going to proceed with constructing the DFA table. So here again, the same input symbols A and B. So here, please make a note. I'm going to construct a DFA from DFA. So for a specific input symbol, I should have a transition to only one state. Okay, so to only one state. Okay, we can we can start with. So I'm going to have the start state that is Q1. So we are going to start it from the start state that is Q1. So from Q1, I'm having. So I'm going to refer the transition table only. I'm not talking of this NFA diagram. Okay. So uh, transition diagram, I'm not going to use with. I'm going to use the NFA transition table. Okay, so here Q1 is the start state. So for input symbol A, I am having a transition to Q1. Right? For input symbol B, I am having a transition to Q1 and Q2, which is not possible in DFA. For two different states, I am not having, I, it is not possible for me to have transition to two different states. So what I am going to do is, I am going to give a new name for this. 
So let me call this as Q1, Q2. Okay. So please make a note. This is not two different state. Instead, this is going to be a single state. Okay. The state name is Q1, Q2. That's it. Okay. State name is Q1, Q2. Right. So for reference, I'm using Q1 and Q2. So Instead, you can use the state name as uh, A, B, C, whatever accordingly, right? So, but uh, keeping track of, uh, so because this combination, this numbering is required while proceeding further with the rest of the uh, uh, table construction, okay? So, here the next state what we are going to proceed with is not Q. Instead, from the star state, what are the states reachable here? Okay, from the star state, what are the states reachable here? So please see here, I am reachable to Q1 and I am reachable to Q1, Q2, right? Already I am having entry for Q1, I am not having entry for Q2. So, sorry, Q1, Q2. So what I have to do is, I have to make the entry in the transition table, okay? So Q1, Q2. So how to construct this Q1 and Q2? So what are what will be the entry over here? It is nothing but Q1 union Q. Okay. So for input symbol A, so what are the transitions that should be taken as union? And for input symbol A, what are the B? What are the transitions for that I should take the union? So please make a note here. Q1, Q2, right? So this is Q1 and this is Q2. So what I should do? So for making an entry for input symbol A. I will be having a transition to Q1 union this one. So here Q1, here empty. So what I will get? I will be getting Q1. Okay. So the next is going to be Q1, Q2 union Q3. So here I should have Q1, Q2, Q3. Right. Q1, Q2, Q3. Right. So here again, I have to proceed with the next state, making entry for the next uh, state. Okay. So here you can see what is the new state uh, uh, that is reachable. So from Q1, I am reachable to Q1. So it's already entry there, and Q1, Q2 already entry there. From Q1, Q2, I am having uh, uh, reach to Q1, Q2, Q3. So for that, I am going to make the entry. Q1, Q2, Q3. I am going to make the entry. How I'm going to make the uh, uh, transitions for input symbol A on input symbol B? So it's very simple. I'm going to take the union of these three, right? Q1, union Q2, union Q3. Okay. So here Q1, union empty, union empty. So what I will get? I'll be getting Q1. So here in this case, Q1, Q2, union Q3, union empty. So what I will get? Q1, Q2, Q3. So here after this point, is there any unknown state? So any new states present without any entry? No, right. So here in this set, so here in this TFA, which is this final state, Q3 is the final state, right? So among this, where I'm having Q3, here I'm having Q3. Right, so here I am having Q3, so this is going to be acting as the final state. Whichever states that is having Q3 is going to have considered as the final state. So let me do it. It is not only the star state, there should be only one star state, but I can have a set of final state, right? So we have constructed the equivalent uh, uh, DFA table transition table so from this we can easily construct the transition diagram okay so here this is the start state that is q1 from q1 for input symbol a i am having a transition to q1 for input symbol b i am having transition to q1 q2 right q1 q2 okay so from q1 q2 for input symbol a i am having transition to Sorry, yes, uh, please make a note over here. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, from, uh, from Q1, Q2, for input symbol A, I am having transition to Q1. I am having transition to Q1. For input symbol B, I am having transition to Q1, Q2, Q3. This is my final state as well. Alright. So then, 
from Q1, Q2, Q3, all in fits in with A, I am having transition to Q1. All in fits in with B, I am having a transition to Q1, Q2. Right? Okay. Uh, so please make a note of it. Uh, 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 you have to, uh, whenever you are constructing a final automata, you have to represent the star state and you have to represent the final state. Without that, there will be no meaning at all. And then label edges should be present and then direction of transition should be present. Right? So, okay. Uh, uh, if it is not clear for you, we will be dealing with further examples. Right? Hope, uh, so it is a straightforward thing only. Okay, let me proceed with one more example now. Let me give you a minute time so you will even try it out on your own. this time right so uh, is this an NFA or DFA NFA, NFA right because for same inputs I am having transition to multiple states and for, for some of the inputs I am not having a transition at all right okay try constructing the DFA for this uh, NFA Have you tried? One minute, ma'am. Okay. Okay, let me start with others, you continue, right? Okay. 
Okay, first let me construct the NFA transition table. Okay, so here input symbols. What are the input symbols here? One, zero, and one are the input symbols, right? And then what about the set of states? So first I have to proceed with Q naught. So from Q naught for input symbol zero, I am having a transition to 0 for 1 I am having transition to Q0 and Q1 okay Q0 and Q1 right and next is next is here it is Q1 so from Q1 for input symbol 0 and not ah yes I am having a transition to Q2 and for 1 also I am having transition to Q2 so the next state is Q2, right? So from Q2 for both the input symbols are not having the transition at all, right? So this is start state and this is the final state. Okay. Now we can proceed with constructing the DFA. Okay. So here again I have to proceed with the same thing. So first please make a note. We have to start with the start state. Okay. Start with the start state. Right. So from start state for input symbol. So here please don't refer with the transition diagram, though both are same. So it, it gives some flexibility. Right. And so here uh, the figures will be uh, easier to manage. Right. So for from input symbol 0. I'm having transition to Q0. Okay, take it. So for input symbol 1, I'm having transition to two different states. So what should I do? I should not having transition to different two different states in the case of DFA. So I'll be introducing a new state. Let me call that new state as Q0 Q1. Okay, let me call that new state as Q0 Q1. So please make a note. This is two different state. Here this is single state. Okay. So after this, I should not proceed with line by line, right? So I should be proceeding with the set of states that are reachable from the start state. From start state, I am reachable to Q0, which for which I am already having an entry. The next state is Q0, Q1. So for that, I should make the entry for each and every input symbol, okay? How I am going to make the entry? So here I have to refer this NFA table. Okay, so I have to take the transitions union of these two transitions. Okay, so uh, uh, for input symbol 0, transition to Q0 union. For input symbol, uh, sorry, uh, from state Q1, for input symbol 0, I am having transition to Q2. So please make a note this is Q0 Q1, new state Q0 Q1, which is based on these two states. Okay, we have introduced a two new state Q0 Q1, which is based on these two, two different states. So that transition on input symbol is going to be dependent on union of these two. Okay, so here this is going to be Q0 Q2. And here it's going to be Q0 Q1 Q2. Right, so what should be my next state? What should be my next state in DFA? Q0, Q1, Q2. Yes, I can go for Q0, Q1, Q2. And what about the other state present here? Q0? Q2 is also a new state, right? So here, please make a note. Q0, Q1 is having a transition on input symbol 0 to Q0, Q2, which is also a new state. Okay, so I'm not having already entry here. Okay, so I have to make the entry Q0, Q2. So how I'm going to make the entry? It is going to be dependent on these two. Q0 union empty. Right? Q0 union empty. That is Q0. And Q0 Q1 union empty. That is Q0 Q1. Right? Q0 Q1. So next entry to be Q0 Q1, Q2. So how I'm going to give the transitions? It is going to be union of these three things. Okay. So this is going to be Q0, Q2. And this is going to be Q0, Q1, Q2. Are you clear with this?
Yes. Yes or no? Okay, here in this case, which are the final states? Is there any, is there one final state or multiple final states? And if so, what are the final states? In NFA, which is the final state? Q2. Q2, good. Here, these are the states, right? Here, I am having four different states, right? So, in these four different states, which are the states accompanied with Q2? Not in good. Q0, Q2. And Q0. Right, and next is Q0, Q1, Q2. Right, so these two will be acting as the final state. Right, so here for this, you can easily draw the transition diagram. Okay, so we can easily construct the transition diagram. Please repeat. Uh, those who contain Q2 will be the final state. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm. Okay, so using this transition table, please do try constructing the uh, transition diagram, right? For this, draw the transition diagram, that is, draw the DFA, construct the DFA, right? Okay, so one more thing, so please make a note. So for this, try constructing the NFA, Epsilon NFA, okay? Try constructing the Epsilon NFA using McNaughton M dot Epsilon algorithm, okay? Please have a practice of, uh, so don't go and keep close your notebooks. So please find time to work it out on this, okay? So, so one, one time practice is enough for you for uh, this thing and all, right? Just to following the uh, algorithm. It's a straightforward mechanism, okay? So, please do try constructing epsilon NFA for this expression. So, in the next class, we can see one more example for uh, uh, non-epsilon NFA to DFA conversion and then we can move on to subset construction algorithm. So, in the case of subset construction algorithm, we'll be starting from a epsilon NFA and we'll be constructing the DFA. Okay. That's it with the today's session. Let me download the attendance.